Thank you, Matt. Good afternoon and welcome to Cybersity Engage webinar. Today's session is a part two vulnerability assessment and penetration testing workshop focused on expo uh, exploitation. So glad to have KSE Consulting Group back with us today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to our returning members and visitors. Okay, good. To those new to Cybersity Engage, our program is designed to grow, develop, and highlight careers, opportunities, and contributions of diverse talent within cybersecurity. Some of the topic areas that are covered are career development, career spotlight, transitioning into cybersecurity, leadership, as well as technology talks. Our diversity highlights are included here on a monthly basis. And I'd like to acknowledge the month of June is LGBTQ and Pride Month. The flow of today's webinar will go as, as it typically does. I'll turn it over to our speakers for introductions. They'll do the presentation. After that, we'll open it up for questions to our attendees. So if you will please post your questions in the QA box to be addressed do, during that time, greatly appreciate it. Uh, following today's presentation, you will be provided with information about diversity, membership benefits, and how to join, as well as upcoming events. Just a couple of other agenda items. Uh, you are joined in listening mode today, and this webinar is going to be recorded. So if you would uh, like to find a recording later, please look on our website under on-demand resources. And so now without further ado, I'd like to welcome back Elias and KSC Consulting Group and turn it over to you and Paul. Uh, before I do that, just so that we can uh, put things in context, I'd ask Elias if you all would just provide a very brief recap of the first workshop that we did and then lead into today's discussion. All right, I'll turn it over to you. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Cassandra, for having us again for, for part two. Uh, my name is Elias. I'm the, you know, the, the child that gave me CEO, but I like to call myself head nerd. Um, we have, with us, we have uh, Solomon Ogeva, and then we have Cameron Evans and Paul Browns. Paul Browns is our in-house and tester slash uh, he's the in-house expert when it comes to penetration testing and all vulnerabilities and exploitation. He's gonna be doing the presentation as well. So just to do a quick recap from our last, um, from our last uh, meeting we had for part one, what we basically did was we, we talked about vulnerability assessments and talked about penetration testing. We discussed over the different tools utilized for what a, a bad actor or a threat actor will utilize from uh, Nessus to and map to different tools utilized to, uh, you know, identifying uh, different assets, IPs, the different operating systems of an environment. We discussed a little bit about networking, how networks work. Uh, we, we, uh, and then, you know, during our present, the demo presentation, uh, we had a Paul, he actually conducted a, a, a vulnerability scan and actually identified uh, some vulnerabilities and he conducted a, a quick ex exploitation but today, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be doing a full-blown exploitation of a vulnerability or, or slash vulnerabilities in different frameworks uh, to just show you guys how pen testers actually uh, work within the environment. Uh, Paul? All right, before we jump to Paul, um, I'm yes. going to go ahead and go through our agenda. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. So as you see... Uh, we wanted to call this, you know, we wanted to have some fun, right? So pen testing can be very fun. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, um, but it definitely can be fun, you know, um, 
this presentation, we want you to definitely ask all the questions that you have, but we're calling this an exploitation party. So the reason we're going uh, that far with it is because um, we're really going to get down into the nitty gritty of uh, figuring out how to exploit um, different attack vectors. So our agenda today is first, we're going to do a recap um, from last time. We did the seven phases of penetration testing. Um, that's going to be a really fast recap that we'll do. Then we will show how to identify analyze and exploit um, vulnerabilities. And then after that, we're going to let, you know, Paul's just going to go crazy and share whatever he shares um, and go through different um, exploitations. And then after we wrap all of that up, then we will go through some resources and some inf important information that we want you guys to know um, is about or in regards to various protocols um, that are typically exploited. Um, also some ways that you could prevent um, you know, uh, um, you know, someone hacking you, right? Um, so without further ado, Paul, if you are ready to go, we can recap those seven phases of pen testing and talk about what we're going to do today. I am. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, yeah. So as in the, the, the last time we were here and, and talking about the different phases. So for pre-engagement, so that would be your planning and preparation. So you have to gather information about your target, um, the, the types of systems that you will be trying to penetrate, um, gathering your rules of engagement. That's very, very important. And that will come up a little bit later on as we start talking about that. Um, and so once you have the prep work done, um, you know, you, you and you have your rules of engagement, then you're going to start doing some information gathering, uh, which is in your recon, um, also OSINT. So in a traditional penetration test, um, say, for instance, I was going to uh, do a pen test on KSC. I would start looking at things like LinkedIn um, and, and other social media sites to see if I could maybe get some emails uh, and, and things like that of team members or, or um, any other employee within KSC. And the reasoning behind that is social engineering. Um, so you can have the most hardened system in the world and by hardened, I mean, you know, you have it so secure um, that and, and up to date and everything is is tugging along fine. All it takes is that one person to click a link in a phishing email and everything goes downhill because um, basically you've just let somebody in the front door. You know, if you think about the house, you could have five deadbolts, the chain, you could even have that that. Um, the, the bar that goes across there and if somebody lets person in it's the same thing as the phishing email all right uh so in phase three we're going to be doing our our discovery so this involves doing um some fingerprinting and scanning and when it comes to fingerprinting and scanning there are some some basic tools that you would use um for the penetration test one of those that we demonstrated last time is nessus so nessus is a vulnerability scan tool um it scans the network you can either do it from outside the network or you can do it from inside the network um being inside the network it would give you a lot more um a lot more surface area to scan Outside the network, it would be if a, a hacker was actually looking at your network to try and attempt an exploit um, or, or gathering that information. Also with fingerprinting, um, and what I'll be demoing today is utilizing NMAP, which is a, um, a basic uh, port and protocol scanner. Um, it'll also discover the versions that um, your computer system is running. So if you have uh, Windows 10, it can tell me that you have Windows 10. It could even tell me uh, what um, service pack you're on and things of that nature. 
So very yeah, important. Which, which, we're, which we are going to cover in the next slide. So um, yes. yep, go ahead, Paul. Yeah. So um, sorry, getting a little a little bit ahead, Cam. Um, so again, uh, Nmap, very uh, powerful tool, and it is utilized in um, pen testing almost always. I don't think I've heard of any pen testing without doing some Nmaps. Um, so in phase four, vulnerability assessment, that's uh, our initial exploitation. Uh, so that also um, is not just initial exploitation, but um, it is the vulnerability research. So if you get a, uh, uh, if you spot a vulnerability, then you have to go research it to figure out how it's going to be um, initially exploited. All right. And then obviously phase five is the exploitation. You're, you're going to get in, you're going to, you know, a, attempt to elevate your privilege um, or gather the um, important data that you may be able to find. Um, in the case that we're going to do today, it's basically just to get in and either obtain uh, root access or administrator access. And then, of course, phase six. That's cleanup, that's post-exploitation, um, and, and that's just making sure that you set the system back to the way it was before you started creating, um, you know, various uh, uh, or exploiting the vulnerabilities. And then phase seven, um, and phase seven is very important for uh, the penetration test because you are going to explain to people that may not be very technical what's wrong with their system and how they can fix it. Okay, so um, again, identifying the attack vectors using scan results. So the last time we were here, we ran, uh, we, we demonstrated running an SS scan and how you do that. Um, and, and just understand that in the real world, uh, a bad guy, he's not going to use a Nessa scan uh, unless he just wants to, um, you know, announce his presence. Okay, it's not it's not a quiet way to analyze a system, and it can set off uh, the intrusion detection system. Could even trigger an intrusion prevention system to come down and, and block the IP that you're. That you're utilizing. Um, now, with that being said, though, we we did demonstrate how it can scan the system and uh, enumerate all of the various potential vulnerabilities. And it'll tell you within the um, Nessus scan how to remediate those vulnerabilities. So it is good in, in that regard. And you would use it on an official penetration test. Um, basically, because they already know that you're that you're going to be coming into the system, uh, un unless you get like a red team event or or something. But again, that goes back to the what I talked about: very important rules of engagement. Um, now, onto Nmap scans. This is what a bad guy would use. Um, uh, definitely, it it can enumerate your network. Quietly, it will tell me, um, you know, ports, protocols, and services, uh, versions of those services or operating systems, um, and you'll see why that's very important here in a moment. Um, and, and again, the best thing is <clears throat> it can be done without setting off those uh, intrusion detectant, detection systems and intrusion prevention systems, so they don't know you that you're there. And it is always used or should always be used on um, any pen testing engagements. There are a couple similar tools, but they rely basically on the Nmap scan engine. Um, so go ahead for the. Mm -hmm. So also to highlight on this slide as well, um, the reason we also wanted to show you these two different scans is because of course we know penetration testing 
right? That is, you're you're on an engagement, right? You're a professional. Um, but we also want to show you, you know, what the bad guys are actually doing, like our actual hackers out there, our threat actors as well. So as we go through this entire process, we're kind of looking at it from both lens and we're going to kind of cross, you know, back and forth. And, you know, it's for you to think like a bad guy in order to provide the best service to your clients as a pen tester and as a, or ethical hacker, if you want to call yourself that. All right, so Paul is gonna open up his screen and he's gonna share one of these scans with us. I'm gonna stop sharing, Paul. Right, share screen. And so as Paul is pulling this up, um, you know, we are gonna get really technical here. So please, please add your questions into the chat. Um, you're gonna be so looking just, at, yep, go ahead. Yeah, so just a, um, let me know when you can see it. Yep. All right. So quick recap. Uh, this was the the Nessa scan um, previously that we that we performed. Um, and and again, like I said, it it gives you the 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 rating for critical or high. It tells you the name of that vulnerability. Um, and it looks a lot prettier when you're actually in Nessus. It gives you a little color coding. Um, so for today, um, the, the first machine that I'm going to demonstrate on the first vulnerable machine that I'm going to demonstrate on, and, and I'll, I'm going to preface that with, um, never try to hack anything without permission, ethical hacking. So, um, these are, these are machines. These are virtual machines. They're on my own computer. I am not out hacking anybody. Um, or any entity, these are mine. I just want to state that uh, just up front. So, yep. and so Paul, so the first step we're going to take is we're going to go to that Nessus scan and then identify um, one of the vulnerabilities um, that we're going to be going over. Sure. Um, so, again, Nessus scan, there's a lot of different vulnerabilities here. One of the things that, that we will be focused on is primarily SMB. And that's gonna be um, your lines. Can you highlight those lines for us? So I wouldn't I, I wouldn't pay attention to to this because um, we're gonna have I'm gonna show the Nmap scan, which is what we're gonna utilize for our um our demonstration today yep perfect all right so that's so i just want to yeah i just want to talk a little bit about the machine uh so this is a vulnerable windows 7 machine okay and uh i went ahead and and ran the nmap scan um prior to coming on only because for the sake of time it can take um you know upwards of of, of a few minutes Sometimes it can take longer. Um, so a oh, little Paul. bit about, yes. Paul, apologies. Is it possible to open up a second Nmap window just to show what, how you run it and come back to this window real quick? Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so to run this command, um, basically, there's different um, IP, you, you wanna utilize the IP address, obviously of the machine that you're attacking. Um, now, the, the various things like the dash dash P um, right here, that's to signify that I want it to scan all ports, okay? Um, the dash T4 is to represent the speed with which I want it to do it. Uh, and then the, the dash A is basically, it's going to run every script that, um, that Nmap has. Um, now, if you were to just run a basic scan, the basic scan might be done quite fast. So you could just say 
nmap, and then scan that IP address. Now it says that it seems it it seems like the host is down and that it may be um, blocking. So that's when you can try uh, other different things, as it suggests. Dash p and n. So again, there's other variations as well. You could say that you want it to just look at the versions of whatever service that it finds open. Um, and, and those are very important to, to look at. Uh, number one, you want the port. Number two, you want to see what's running on that port. What type of service is it? And number three, any information that you can gather about that service. So in this instance, as you see, um, I have various ports here are open. So port 139 and 445 are, uh, those lead back to SMB usually. Now, um, Cam, do you yep. want to take back yep. over? Yep, I'm going to take back over. So you guys see this is the scan. These are some of the vulnerabilities we're going to be looking at today. Um, and I could steal the screen back from you, Paul. All right, so we chose our attack vectors that we are going to be exploiting today. So next, we're going to talk about deciding the hacking technique for those attack vectors. So if you want to go ahead, Paul, and just run through like that next step of making a decision of the actual hacking technique um, and just kind of defining what those two things are. Sure. Um, so basically, when you want to define, when you want to figure out what your technique is going to be, um, that will greatly depend on your rules of engagement. Um, there are attacks out there that will um, potent, that could potentially um, you know take down a, a server in in a sense perf performing a uh, denial of service attack. Um, and it may be unintended. Maybe you're trying to gain a foothold into that machine but you inadvertently crash it instead. Um, and then, uh, so again, rules of engagement, very, very critical um, to, to look at because if you, um, if you don't follow those rules of engagement, number one, you can cause damage to whatever entity you're performing that vulnerability scan for. And number two, you know, then, then you're, you could be held liable. Okay, so I hope I hope that makes sense for everyone. Um, so again, uh, once you have conducted your scan and you have some ports and protocols and services that are open, uh, obviously the next part is to research those. Okay, and that that is where we would move on to the attack vectors. So attack vector, a point in space that a threat actor can take an aggressive action against. Um, and that involves evaluating the target's unique security posture. And then you want to develop the, um, a, a tailored approach to that. So you don't just come in, run a scan, and then say, oh, I'm going to pick that, that port to hit. Because it may not be the port that you want to actually attack. All right. And so, Paul, if you want to go ahead and open your scan back up and kind of walk us through your analysis of those different attack vectors and vulnerabilities. Sure. And then let us know exactly what hacking technique that you're going to use. So um, Kali Linux does come with a couple, uh, does come with several tools that you can use. Um, so what I would look at is some of the versions. Um, so for this instance, you know, I want to do 
a Windows 7. Um, I may even I'll search I'll search it by as much as I can put on there. Um, so we have a tool called Searchploit. Now, Searchploit, what it does is it has a uh, database of various exploits. And then it'll literally walk you through the, the, the it has a text document or it could even have a, a program that will show you how to um, conduct those exploits. So obviously it didn't have anything here for that specific one. So I'll go a little bit less specific and just search Windows 7. The other method also is I'm going to utilize Google. And I'm going to put service pack one and I'm going to add that exploit. So immediately when I put Windows 7 Ultimate 7601 service pack one exploit, the first thing that pops up is this MS 17-010 eternal blue. Uh, so Eternal Blue was actually developed by NSA. So I could, um, if I click on this, it'll it'll take me to the Rapid Sevens website, and it'll talk about the exploiting. So I would look at that. Plus, I might look at GitHub for exploiting Windows Seven uh, professional um, or any other uh, different basically any other websites that you know you might come to the cve details and look at um microsoft sevens uh and all the details that they have there that would be something that you could also find if you did a nessa scan just to just to also add to that paul uh, to the folks listening in rapid seven is also actually another scanning tool as well so what Paul is doing here is, is basically identify the vulnerabilities. And what he's doing here, he's researching to see, okay, let me see what are the fixes. And then let me see what are the detailed description associated with that vulnerability. So, so Paul as a hacker, as a pen tester, he can actually go in and try to identify to see if that system do in fact have these following weaknesses within the environment. So it can actually exploit it. Exactly. And, and as Elliot said, um, Rapid7, they, they have a product called Nexpose. So instead of Nessus, they have ne Nexpose. Um, they also have uh, another tool that we'll be um, showing here uh, shortly. Yep. So, Paul, um, did you choose your hacking technique that you're going to be using um, I, for SMB? I did. I have okay. I have chosen it and um, give you the screen back. All right. So now, um, before we actually jump into watching Paul do his uh, magic, as I like to call it. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, the next step, which is exploiting the attack vectors. And as you know, they already started going over some tools. But if you can walk us, Paul, through some tools and frameworks um, that you would be using for exploitation. Sure. Um, so some of the tools that, that are commonly used in any pen test to exploit attack vectors are Nmap, as I've shown you, um, Burp Suite, which um, we did, uh, we demoed that last time we were on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So uh, Burp Suite allows you to interact with websites and web applications for exploiting um, various vulnerabilities. The, uh, the, the last one on here is Metasploit. Metasploit is a very, very powerful tool and it's actually um, developed by Rapid7. Um, so Metasploit allows the hacker to not, not only conduct scans, but actually create the uh, exploits and payloads and payload would be 
the malicious, uh, you know, program or or whatever it is that you want to deliver to the target computer or target system. Uh, along with that is frameworks. So the real purpose of a framework is to kind of gather all of these tools that you need to conduct penetration tests, um, forensics, and, and all of that, and, and pack it all into one spot for you. So what you've seen me use today is Kali Linux. Um, that is probably one of the most popular and one of the oldest. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe in the past it was called Backtrack. Might be wrong on that. Um, but it's, it's, it's the widely the most popular. Uh, you will also be able to utilize that if you were to try various places like Hack the Box and try Hack Me. Um, now, also on Hack the Box, you'll run into uh, Parrot Security. So Parrot Security is very similar to Kali. Um, it just, it, it may have uh, incorporated different tools than say Kali Linux. Um, and then Black Arch Linux is another form that is similar to those two. All right. Over to you, Paul, for our official exploit party. <laughs> right. Okay, um, so while we were talking, uh, I can show that the search exploit has come through and it has given us a whole lot of different um, exploits, potential exploits, okay? Um, now you, you have to be uh, very cognizant of the fact that, you know, some of these are like, this is built for Windows XP, um, so you would have to do your due diligence and look for various things to, to, to make sure that you have the right exploit, that you're going to try the right exploit. So for this one, since I've already decided on utilizing the um, Eternal Blue, The best thing is, is that I can go into Metasploit. So this is Metasploit. And basically to get to Metasploit, you, you come in, you run the command of MSF console once you've logged into your Kali Linux machine. Now to find potential exploits within uh, Metasploit, you also have a search function. So for here, I will use search. Now it gives me five different exploits. Well, actually I, I shouldn't say five. It gives me three exploits and two scanners. So for this one, if, um, now you can do this one of two ways. You can either type in use and then you could uh, copy and paste the entire name or you could just use the number. So for this particular one, I'm gonna say, let's use three because I wanna scan this machine to make sure that I have the right, um, or, or that I have the right exploit. So by typing options, I can see what I need to set in here. So obviously I need to set the R host. So let me go back. I need to get my IP address. So I set R host, which is the basically the target machine. Now that I have that set correctly, if I needed to change anything, um, if I needed to change the port, 
I would just set set and R port. And then um, if you see uh, L port L or L host, that is your machine or your the listening machine. Now it's just as simple as typing in run. So it tells me that this is likely vulnerable. Doesn't mean that it's 100% vulnerable. So again, I'll search. So I'm gonna say, all right, let me use the eternal blue. Now my options, it also, if you notice it, it sets a default payload for a meterpreter shell. So this gives me a reverse TCP shell, which will enable me to take command and control over the target machine. So again, I'm gonna look at options. So I have to set my R host again. And then basically I can leave everything else as default. I already have my L host set. And then it's as simple as typing in run. Now I have successfully gotten into the vulnerable machine. As you can see down here, it'll say win. Um, on occasion, it'll come back and it'll say failed. You just have to retry the exploit again. You may even have to change the payload. Um, sometimes a staged payload, as this was a staged payload, will not work. And you need to send a um, just a, a non-staged payload. If you send a non-stage payload, it just kind of throws it all in all at the same time. Now, um, to verify that I have it, um, so it tells me that I am in the server, or I'm in the uh, system. So I can do things like look at the directory, So now if you notice here, I am basically in the in the Windows system looking at it as if I was in this um, file explorer, if you will. So and then once you're in, you basically uh, you could do things like look for specific data that you want to, uh, exfiltrate. Now, if you're on a traditional pen test um, for a uh, an, an entity, they've contracted you, you're following rules of engagement. What I would do is I would um, obviously take screenshots. So, so the first screenshot that you're going to take uh, obviously would be of the Nmap scan. Um, and then once you've Capture that information. Um, you know, you would you would talk about uh, how you exploited, and you would show. You know, you could talk about that you ran that scanner, and that scanner showed that it's vulnerable. And then you could run, and then you would take another one of the fact that you're in the machine. what your user ID is. And then basically you could you could screenshot some of these um, just showing how you could access uh, the various aspects of the system. So let's 
So now I am in, I'm gonna go to users. And now you can see that I am in the, um, basically I've rooted the machine. Uh, I can access the administrator um, file directory. And now that I'm in here, I can, you know, change things. Um, I could delete the boot. Um, there, there's a whole lot of damage that you could do, but there's also other things that, you know, maybe you're looking for um, documents. So how many of us keep stuff on their desktop? So I see something that says important documents, right? Exactly. So, Paul, uh, I know Cassandra said that we are getting really close to time uh, for the 15 minute mark uh, for, the, for the hour. So I want to do a quick recap here, Paul, if that's okay. Sure. Everything that was confusing here. So basically, guys, what, what Paul did was he he ran a scan. He ran a NMAP scan to identify any ports, open ports, protocols, any vulnerabilities in the environment. Once he identified the different vulnerabilities in the environment, the next step that he went through was basically look for the vulnerabilities that he wants to exploit. He went and did some search, identified, okay, I'm going to basically going to exploit this vulnerability. Once he identified that he, what vulnerability is going to exploit, he went into his uh, framework uh, and they identified somebody, you know, when he and searched for that exploit, there was three different vulnerabilities and two scanning tools that were identified. He went ahead and exploited the vulnerability. He had to set up his, his listening host, set up his R host, which is the remote host. Once that was identified, he went ahead and ran the technique that he wants to exploit a vulnerability with. And he was successfully able to remotely uh, basically get access to the host without the host knowing that he's in there. So what he's doing right now, he's going, he's going within the system remotely and identifying all the different uh, documents and whatever that he needs right now. He has complete control over the system and anything that he needs, he can get access to or control or even deploy different uh, attacks within the system if he needs to. Uh, so uh, I don't know, Cameron, are you in the call? No, yeah, yeah. So definitely. Yes, um, yes. So Paul, if if you wanna if you wanna go ahead and let us get back to the other screen. Um, so that is pretty much sums everything up. Um, what we're gonna do here is kind of run through a couple of resources since this is um recorded. Um, you know, you can take your time and read those through. Um, but if you want to touch on it real quick, I think we just have about three slides that talks about some protocols used for exploitation. So we have HTTP. I'm going to just start going through the next ones. Um, SMB. And again, just, you know, go through this recording and take a pause on these different slides. Um, and then we have FTP. And we would get into it a lot more, but we are going to go ahead and move on to our questions um, that we may have from you guys. Um, so with that being said, Cassandra, we can open the floor to questions. I don't know if there's any special apparatus you have to do or if you want us to just go through the chat here. Yeah, so thanks, Cameron. Uh, what I had mentioned earlier, for any questions our attendees have, please post them in the QA box. That way they will stay uh, distinguished away from the, any chat information that's in that box. So if you have any questions, please post them now. We want to provide you with the opportunity to ask this very impressive, skilled uh, panel today questions. So if you all will start posting your questions there. Okay. Yep, that, that makes sense. Um, I can start going through some of these that we have, because I see that I don't think they were using this one. Um, so we appreciate everyone asking if this was recorded. Um, I see Fawn, you like the difference in between the good and bad? Absolutely. 
Um, so go ahead, Paul. Is it fair to say Nestus is for blue team and Nmap is for red team? So, I mean, I would say that that Nessus can be used by red team, but when you think of red team, it's like the the they're trying to act like a a bad guy. They're trying to act like the the um what you would think of as a hacker, right? Um so so blue maybe purple team, I would say, because purple team is is that you know mix of red and blue. Uh you know they're there, you know what they're doing. Um so you just have to keep in mind that that when you utilize Nessus, you're going to be literally announcing your presence to uh, the the security operations center, and any any good um, uh, analyst there will shut down your IP. All right. Why did we choose SMB? Is that an easy one to exploit? Uh, so SMB does have a tremendous amount of of exploits um but it it also gives you a, a lot of potential ways to um do things on the system um you know you can deliver ransomware and and things like that all right um so how do you know it's a vulnerable machine uh well so either if you're asking specifically, how did I know that this is a vulnerable machine? Um, I mean, there's there's a website that you can go and you can actually download vulnerable machines to exploit. Um, if you're talking about in the real world situation, um, it would come through running things like Nmap and and some of the other tools like Burp Suite to figure out if the system is vulnerable. All right, and then we have another one. Some steps of the vulnerability management process are identify, identifying vulnerable machines. Um, so I think this is someone else just kind of adding in their thoughts. Yes, this session is recorded. Yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. Yes, today's is recorded. Backtrack, don't know what that really means. Uh, currently available. All right, so I see this one is kind of the same question here um, from, looks like, Fending. Um, we went for we went from Nmap or Nessus to search exploit to MSF console metasploit question mark. So I think they're asking that was the um, that was the path that you took, right? Um, the steps that you took, right, Paul? Yeah. So I I did Nmap first. Nmap's going to enumerate ports and protocols and versioning. Um, and then once I was able to do, once I was able to see what's, you know, uh, open and potentially um, open for exploit, uh, then it would be search exploit to look to see if there is a vulnerability within the database. Also, use Google. Um, you know, you, you have Google is a very powerful tool and it will you know, it will go out to every place and look to see if there's an exploit for a, um, a specific vulnerability. All right. And then, I, yes, to MSF I, console, Metasploit. Yep. Isaiah, I think Isaiah is part of our community. Is that the Isaiah Kennedy that's part of yep. the KSC yep. ecosystem? Yes. Yep. Hi, yep. Isaiah. Thank yes. you so much for joining. Um, uh, so Isaiah is on all of our stuff that we do. So he says, Paul, do you know what all that is on the screen says, or do you focus on the main things that you're looking at? I mean, so you want to you you want to try and look at some of the main things like the ports, the protocols, and the services. Um, you know, you could obviously dig down and and research some of the other things that that come up, but you know, knowing the basic ports and protocols and and the services that are attached um is is like your your main focus here all right i'm gonna go to one of our other slides about preventative measures um so we had a question from opme um are they also from our uh, community i'm oh, sorry um how can a layman victim defend against this kind of attack so i opened up our preventative measures here but did you want to kind of dive into that a little bit paul yeah. Uh, so number one, obviously, for for 
this particular system that we looked at, um, it would be, uh, and so Windows 7 is end of life software. So Windows is no longer offering any security updates for that. So in this particular instance, it would be, you know, upgrade, um, which would kind of fall under patch management in a way, right? The other part is, uh, you know, having uh, endpoint security, having your um, your intrusion detection system, your intrusion prevention system, um, you know, really your, your firewall, all of those things like that. So the number one thing that a layman person can do is make sure that they're on patch management because you're not going to have, um, yeah, you know, the, the crazy tools that an organization would, but you do have your own endpoint security, right? You do have your antivirus, anti-malware, you have a Windows firewall and things like that. Yep. All right. So we have an anonymous attendee who threw a question here. Um, this should be a fun one. So sorry if this is unrelated. It may have been a topic of the last lecture. At the beginning, you were talking about OSINT gathering emails. I just used the Harvester last week for good intentions, but it's turned very ineffective. It went from being able to find almost any email to, pr to practically none because of locked API keys, Google rate limit blocking. Do you have another recommended go-to for that? Oh, wow. So um, there are, I, th I think it's uh, Hunter, Hunter .i, Hunter .io, Um I'm trying to remember. Oh, I don't have it loaded on this computer. Um, so I'm just going to add here, um, just, you know, kind of wrapping this up. Um, so we, this is obviously, right, like a crash course, a way to get your eyes acclimated with pen testing, right? There's a lot of different components here. So I see a lot of different questions about, you know, the scope of what this was. Um, so obviously we had about 35 minutes. Uh, with that being said, you know, there are definitely full-blown certifications for this kind of stuff. Um, all different types of workshops and everything specifically that, you know, Cyversity does and that we do um, at KSE. But, you know, definitely keeping in perspective here, um, this was the crash course from everybody who is entry level, maybe knows nothing um, about pen testing to people who are very, very well versed in pen testing. So I really hope that everybody got something out of this. Um, but when it comes to a lot of these specifications and anything else that you want to see, um, yeah, we definitely do those kind of workshops as well. Um, so we wanted to give you guys the lowest hanging fruit here uh, so we didn't lose you. Um, and I would love to know how you guys thought about that and, and how you felt. But um, did you did you find that website or not, uh, Paul? I'm looking through my I'm looking through my notes. OK, uh, while you're looking through that. Um, I, 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 I got it. It is Hunter. It is Hunter.io. So they give you you get to you have to sign up, but uh, you get a number of free searches. Um, there's uh, email hippo that you can use for verifying addresses. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the Hunter Hunter.io is probably one of the ones that you'll want to look at. All right, and then Deo, um, he asked, do Sims easily flag such attacks? It depends on how loud the person is that's trying to, and when I say loud, it's, uh, you know, what techniques are they using? What I use today, that that probably would get picked up on, on a, a Sim tool, um, you know, captured in the log. Um, so obviously there's ways to go make it a lot quieter, uh, uh, of, a of a, um, you know, your active reconnaissance. Um, I hope that answers your question. I do want to add to that real quick is just as, as a pen tester, just as pen testers are actually figuring out ways of how to be quiet. You have to also remember seam tools are also working on ways on how to identify those quiet methodologies. 
So there's there's some SIM tool companies that actually hire um, that actually hire um, pen testers or ethical hackers to help them, you know, modify the tool and make the tool even better to pick up on a lot of these pen testing techniques. Yep. And then I see we have someone, Calvin Whitney, which is a nice name. I knew nothing about how pen testing worked until today. That's awesome. Eric Beasley, one of our favorite people, a sim will detect anything, but it only alerts if it is configured right. <laughs> Remember your lessons, Padawan. Um, and then, <laughs> hi, Eric, we're so happy to see you. Um, and then it looks like Jawan Spencer. Now I'm mad I missed the last pen top workshop. This was the perfect lunch break. Well, I appreciate you saying this was the I perfect lunch break. I appreciate you. I could probably Thank think you. of a few other types of lunch breaks that would be perfect, <laughs> but I really appreciate that. Um, also, Cameron, don't mean yeah. to interrupt, but uh -huh. our operations team did post the link to the YouTube for the first workshop we had. That's up somewhere in the chat sh session as well. And it's also yeah. on Cyversity website under undermanned resources. Perfect. That's that's perfect. So we have about two minutes. Um, so I'm just going to open the floor to uh, my team in particular. I don't know if we have um, some of our other instructors and our our team on. Um, I know we have uh, one person. His name is Michael Asari. Um, he does a lot of our networking kind of information that we uh, provide. We also have Solomon Ogieva. Um, he also is you know part of doing the workshops and everything like that. As you guys can tell from Paul, he is a real pen tester. Um, and I wanted to point this out to all of you who wanted to get into pen testing. I mean, one of the reasons that we love cybersecurity and we push it with a lot of like underserved communities or underemployed individuals or any of that kind of thing is we push a lot of people into pen testing because, you know, you don't have to be, you know, it, you're getting hired for your skills, right? And for your knowledge. And yes, you do have to kind of provide those final reports at the end where you communicate well, um, but this is a skill that you can learn. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's something that you can definitely believe in yourself. And so I hope we showed you today that it just takes some um, exercise and this was in 30 minutes. So we're so grateful to have the opportunity. Thank you, Cassandra um, and Ellie. You're Elisa. welcome. Thank you all so much for being here today. Uh, if you could release the screen share so I can bring up. Yes. Thank you. So um, again, thank you all so much for being here. KSE is the best here. You all got a lot of free information, free training. Um, I do believe you all mentioned you had a Discord community as well. So, you know, I, I recommend uh, that our attendees follow up on that. Um, also, Cyversity does have training opportunities as well as mentioned before. I'm just going to share a little bit about our mission and our cause, uh, which is our mission is the consistent representation of women and underserved, uh, underrepresented minorities within the cybersecurity space. So that is the, the heartbeat, that is the purpose and mission that we're focused on. Uh, the cybersecurity community and uh, profession has such a huge workforce gap. And we're trying to provide this opportunity for so many people out there. Um, this can create economic mobility for many, many uh, people. So we want to thank you KSE again for your expertise and your time today. Um, a little bit more about Cyversity. We have various programs uh, designed to help you learn more about different areas in the profession. You can also get, uh, assess your skill sets through Competency Core. We do have development and training scholarship programs provided to you as well, and a mentorship program, and then also chapters throughout the US. So please check out our website. We'd love to have you become part of the community. We have uh, just a, a low base membership fee, $100 for professionals and $20 per student. And that is on an annual basis. Uh, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about 
our national conference coming up in October, October 29th through the 31st. We are now taking call for speakers. And so if you're interested in presenting, please uh, check out our website to submit what you'd like to speak about before June the 29th, but check out our website for more information there. Lastly, I wanna thank our attendees for joining us today. I hope you found that this topic was valuable. We also are providing a survey and we ask that you complete that to provide us with feedback on today's event. Uh, I'm gonna wrap up with a couple of more things here. Uh, cybersity has, become, has access to Cybrary IT, which is a learning management system. Right now we have available eight slots for active Atlanta chapter members. If you'd like to gain access to that, it provides training, uh, certification prep it, for all levels of cybersecurity professionals. If you're, you're transitioning in, it's a great resource to utilize as well. And that would be independent learning, practice test questions for uh, certifications and things like that. Um, our next event that we have coming up will be in August on the four quadrants of security compliance programs. And we're also uh, organizing other events. Please check out the website under on the events page for other events that are in the planning process to be posted out very, very soon. And on that note, I would just say thank you so much again, Cameron, Elias, Paul, absolutely awesome. We appreciate you. And until next time, uh, we hope that you'll join us back again and maybe we can make that in-person event happen, okay? I love thank that. Thank you so much. We love that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Stay safe and stay connected, everyone. Absolutely. Bye -bye. Absolutely. Bye. Have Bye -bye. a good day.